of um, James Good Mason and Mark Lennon. Thank you. Last night we were watching old family um, films. I'm going to look at you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, remember, you, you, I, I don't know how you found it, but you found the, the baby shower invitation. It's a girl! And uh, you know, all, all celebrating, it's 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 a girl. And then you know, a few about a month later, no, it's not a girl. It's a boy. And um, all the all the the pink stuff went back to the to the baby shops. And and uh, anyway, it's been a long journey. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's really has. When you were growing up, I always had. Well, it's just sort of, sort of like thoughts crossed my mind that maybe he could possibly be gay. I wasn't really quite sure. I mean, we live part-time in France and up in the mountains. <laughs> and um, um, when I'd come to the States to come work, he'd say, Mom, you know, go to the Disney store and bring me back the, you know, Sleeping Beauty dress or the Snow White dress. <laughs> or the, not to reinforce stereotypes. I know. But. I know. I know. And I thought, okay, well, all right, you know, and, and uh, you know, fantasies, genderless, and all that, and and, um, and then you know, there were a few a few little indications along the way, and and um, I don't know. Um, I think what did it for me was um, when Brokeback Mountain came out. And we were all going to go to the movies as a family, <laughs> the matinee, to Brokeback Mountain. And it's like, you know, it's a modern family, I don't care. I mean, I, you know, most of my friends, 95% of them are, are uh, gay and lesbian, and it's always been that way. And, you know, we, my husband and I, like to think of ourselves as, as um, being, you know, open-minded and progressive and, and pretty not, you know, not to judge anything. And so it's like, okay, you know, family goes, goes, goes to the matinee. And something happened where I had to put off the movie by like a couple days and you threw the biggest temper tantrum I think I've ever seen. You know, that was like a year before I came out. So like that, I was on the cusp and I really, you know, I was at a really vulnerable part of my life where I felt like I needed to take that step. And seeing that movie, you know, at that point it was like, oh my God, you know, a gay movie. You know, a movie that I could identify with because I'd never heard of something like that before. And, you know, gay, Brokeback Mountain was one of the first mainstream gay movies. So, and don't forget where we were living. There yeah. was no... Yeah, I was, you know... In a lot of ways, living in the south of France, living in Europe, you know, everybody says, you know, oh, south of France. You know, we used a, to say, oh, I hate France. All it is is a bunch of castles and beaches. Oh. <laughs> I, I know that sounds awful. But the thing about it was it was a really, you know, lonely place to live, especially being an American gay teenager. So, you know, there were no other gay people in my school. So uh, I did feel isolated, like I'm sure, you know, a lot of kids do, you know, here in Bakersfield, in Tehachapi. You know, and this, it's the same, similar kind of experience where you just feel like you're, you know, you're solitary. You know, you don't have anybody around you that you can identify with. So Brokeback Mountain was like the first time that I felt, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to get to see you know, my, my own community you know, portrayed on the screen. Yeah, and this is before, this is before, well, actually, when you threw that temper temper, I thought, aha, you know, <laughs> there's something more to my son than, than you know, that meets the eye. So, um, you know, we sort of go on and, and uh, I mean, you know, you've always been a little bit different. You were never like, um, I remember we used, used to always went to dress like a gentleman and, and um, we had to have a tailcoat made for you, and you had a top hat and wore, a, wore an ascot and had a little cane. And uh, we'd take him to dinner, and, and it, was, it was always a, it was a little bit different than, than um, all the other kids that were out. Well, yeah, I mean, I always felt different. You know, I mean, I didn't know, you know, the age of four or five or six that it was being gay, necessarily. I just knew that, you know, in a lot of different ways, I wasn't. You know, a typical kid. I was bullied at school, you know, for a lot of different reasons before I ever came out as gay. So, you know, that was like the icing on the cake. Although, actually, it got kind of better after I came out. Because, <laughs> well, you know, it's just like, there was nothing to lose, really, necessarily. I mean, you know, all my, I had a lot of friends that, uh, you know, I, I had a certain level of confidence that I wasn't going to be, you know, any more ostracized. I knew that I wasn't going to be you know, physically bullied or anything like that, so. Well, let's back up, though. Well, yeah, no, yeah. 
<laughs> but I just think I'm saying that, you know, I was always different and uh, yeah, from the very beginning, you know. So I rem I'll never forget that day. Um, it was during, it was summertime and, and there's a, there's a lake near where we live and we used to go out there and, and make a lunch and, and go have lunch and swim and everything. And, and um, we were, I was driving and, and you turned to me and, and you said, um, Mom, I have something to tell you. And I said, yeah, and? And then you looked at me and, and um, you, your lips started quivering and, and you go, you know, no, no, no. No, I, 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 I can't tell you. And um, I said, well, now you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> I knew I'd pass the point of no return. I was like, you know, I just, and I knew that, so I, it was very difficult to deal with. I was like, now, you know, I've said, I've said, I have something to tell you. And she could tell that I was, you know, really emotionally. Were you affected. afraid? Well, yeah, I've been thinking about it the entire day, for, well, not just that day, but for a long time. But that day particularly, I knew that you were going to stay day was tell me. The day. That yeah, so I, we went through that whole day, you know, going to lunch and you know, going to the lake, and uh, I knew that the whole time I was like, oh my god, you know, when is when is this moment going to come? Um, but then that was like the one moment that I could finally just let it out. It, I, it was the first moment that I just felt like, okay, I, I'm I'm ready to do this. As scary as it is, you know. So I said, what is it? And he goes, I like boys. And I went, <gasps> and I, I was driving and I had to pull the car over. And, you know, I'm like a gay friendly person. And like I said, 95% of my friends are gay and lesbian, gay or lesbian. And, and uh, I had, it was like someone, it was like someone knocked the wind out of me. And I pulled the car over, and I collected myself. And I don't remember quite what I said. I did. I, did I say, "Are you sure?" Or, or? no? I tried. You didn't say much. <laughs> I mean, although I, I, although I think the first. Well, I was shocked, but not really shocked. I mean, I always sort of knew it, but still, when you know your child tells you that you know. Uh, comes out and you know says I like boys. It's like the first thing I thought is, oh my god, what kind of world is it going to be up against? Even though I know it's better, there's still a lot of homophobia. And the second thing was, what am I going to tell your dad? That was the second thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, it was reassuring for me because even though you were, you know, she was crying and I, you, know, you were, I, I was crying, but and I it, could tell that you weren't like you weren't. You certainly weren't angry. You weren't like you know, I wasn't oh, angry you know, at all. You were. You weren't. You weren't aggressive, and so I knew. I think there was a certain amount of reassurance there that I knew that. And I, you know, even before that, I knew that you and Dad weren't gonna throw me out or anything. I mean, that at least I had that certain amount of com you know, uh, comfort because I didn't feel. You know, the stakes for me were a lot lower than they are for a lot of people because I, you know, as you said, I um, my own. All the people I grew up with practically were gay. You know, so I knew that I wasn't going to be thrown out of the house. But it's still a really scary Well, thing. I think I was scared. I mean, I don't know what I was scared of, but I mean, I was certainly, um, I remember the drive home was about an hour and a half and I couldn't even think straight. I couldn't drive and I was just, you know, I couldn't think straight for like, for like two weeks. And I remember you saying, I mean, I, you know, it, with no judgment, no anything, except I was just afraid for a lot of things, I guess. And not, not uh, you know, for the reasons that I said, but I remember you saying something to me that um, I'll never forget was when I was just sitting there and I was crying and you said, my sexuality does not define me. And I always um, never forget that moment because it's like, of course it doesn't. And amazingly right. enough, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I, I think that quote came from either a P-Flag, I think it was the P-Flag website, but it was like, you know, coming out tips. And, uh, like what things you should say. I don't think I ever I'm told sorry, you that. that. You I never told you that. I never well, told I you that. I thought you were so brilliant. I remember that it was. Um, you know, but I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm obviously, I meant what I said, and I mean, you know, for me it's like, 
the meaning of that to me is, you know, it's, you should be proud of your sexuality. I mean, you should be proud of who you are, and you know, you should be, you should be afraid to make, you know, that a, a, you know, a proud aspect of your identity, and you should, you know, I encourage people to get involved with gay rights and gay activism and to make it a part of their lives, but, you know, I think what I meant by that was being gay isn't the only thing that defines you. You're still the same person that you were before, and uh, yes. you know you're not a caricature. You're not you know this new. So it's not like you were high, you're pretending to be somebody else the whole time. You know. Well, I knew that. I just um, and I think you did mention P flag actually, and I thought, well, that's pretty amazing, and I, that's one of the reasons actually why I'm here is because um, they were helpful to you and, and, you know, I've since done a lot of research on the organization and, you know, it's an amazing thing. I know as we were driving home, it was like, I know we were discussing, okay, you know, I know, you know, but dad doesn't know. And how are we gonna deal with that? Because although dad is gay friendly, I mean, you're his only son and for a lot of m men that would define their masculinity. I, I was like beside myself because I couldn't, I couldn't even look at him, you know, because I knew something that he didn't, we both knew something that he didn't know. But what you did the next day was just, uh, it, what, he, he decided to announce to the whole school before I could even tell dad <laughs> that you were gay. And you told me not to. I told you not to because I, I would think it would be nice for your dad to know well, that you were before the school does. <laughs> No, and I mean, I remember thinking like, you know, that's a fair point. But for me, you know, it was almost like a safety mechanism. Like, I mean, of course I had you, and that was obviously very, you know, it was a very, uh, it meant a lot. I mean, I'm not saying that it did wasn't comforting for me, but the idea of having my school behind me or my friends behind me as sort of a support base, and plus my mom. But to announce it to the school. Well, I know. <laughs> that was like, that was like, it was the big news. It was huge, breaking news that day. You know, I was always, I've always been interested in politics. So as weird as it sounds, when I was a 14-year-old, I was like, well, naturally, you know, the right way to announce news, like I'm announcing for president or something, <laughs> is to make a speech and announce that I'm gay. So, you know, I have a bunch of my class around me, and... Uh, you know, I said it, and I wrote, I pre-wrote it. I spent, you know, a long time writing it, and uh, you know, I, it, it, yeah, a day. It was like a day or two before it was a I came. Day, it was a day the after only reason why, something. but the only, it was, the day after. it was. It was a day after. But then, no, it was the day before. It was the day. It was the day after. The day before we told Dad. No, it wasn't. It was the day after. You sure? <laughs> I'm, exa I'm positive because I was horrified that you can actually do that before you tell dad, but that's fine because dad, because dad did not find out for a, a while and I remember t trying to, t to toy with how are we going to tell him and I have to say as a parent and being, I like to think of myself as being, you know, pretty smart, savvy, a little bit well-bred, a little bit, and, but I still was thinking, you know, how am I going to deal with this? And I would go to, I had to go to my therapist and think, was it something I did? Was it something I said? And I know that that's not true, but of course I think that's kind of the natural thing that, you know, for a parent to think is that, you know, was it something else other than just being born that way? And of course I knew that, you know, I mean, you even said that. I said, well, when did you know that you were gay? And you said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like not to... Casper? Well, exactly, like not to criticize your, you know, your, your presentation skills. But, like, you know, I didn't get the... <laughs> I, I wanted to say, like, we didn't get the chance to... I, I was going to say, you know, talk a little about when I was that young, because, yeah, I knew from, you know, as far as I, as long as I can remember. Um, when I was seven, uh, I saw... It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> but I saw the movie um, Casper the Friendly Ghost. There's a scene at the end where the... Girl, Christina Ricci dances with, he turns into a boy and they dance. And I remember thinking like, you know, I, not that I wish I was her, although you know, nothing against the transgender community, but I, you know, I wanted to be in her place. I, I wanted to dance with this boy. So that was a relevatory moment for me. I didn't know what that meant at the time. Um, you know, I didn't know, I obviously, I didn't understand for quite a while what you know, what that means, or what the political or social uh, relevance was. So, you know, even though I knew it from when I was seven, it, was, it wasn't until I was, 
you know, 13 or 14 that I finally put the word with the feelings. And then I realized, oh, okay, you know, this is a big deal. This is, you know, something I need to get off my chest, you know? I know that the two months out, it was about two months after you told me that I was like toying with, well, should I, you tell him? Should I tell him? Should we both tell him? Uh, went to the therapist and she suggested that you tell him. But I thought, well, just in case there's any kind of bad reaction, which I wouldn't think there would be, that maybe I should just do it myself. So, um, we dropped you off at the bus stop, and I went home, and I waited, you know, for your dad to... I remember, I remember that. I remember that morning. And, um... I went off to school, and you yeah, went home. Yeah, I went home, and I said, um... I have, to my husband, I have, well, to your dad, I have something to tell you. And uh, he said, what? And I said, um, Dookie, <laughs> James, uh, li uh, likes boys. And he went, you're kidding. No, he doesn't. And I said, yeah, he does. And he said, well, it's just a phase, just a phase. And I said, I don't think it is just a phase. And, I, and he said, don't be ridiculous. And I said, I'm not. It's, and so... Yeah. I think that it kind of went blank after that point, because <laughs> I was I was really I was really scared, and I mean, I knew he wouldn't react badly, but I wasn't really sure how. Well, you know, I mean, I've never had that experience of how. It's just not not his. Even though you know he was accepting of gay people and he he'd known gay people you know throughout his life, it wasn't like he had like I mean like you. It wasn't like he had a big group of gay friends, so. You know, it wasn't necessarily something that was on the forefront of his, you know, of his mind. You know, I mean, he wasn't, uh, I mean, in fact, I remember not long after, once he accepted me, you know, once he'd already accepted me, we went to a store um, near where we lived, and it was like a store with a bunch of, like an Urban Outfitters kind of thing, lots of accessories and pillows and that kind of stuff. And there was a rainbow pillow in there. And I forgot what I said, but I like pointed the pillow or something, and he went, like, he didn't, he didn't know that the rainbow flag was synonymous with the gay community. And I couldn't believe, I was like, you, didn't, you don't know that? Like, but he was like, no, you know, it's, it wasn't that he was anti-gay, it was just that it wasn't part of his, you know, his universe, you know? Well, I, I remember that, I mean, what happened when you got home from school? What, because I wasn't, I, I wasn't there. I remember, <laughs> I remember, for a while we just didn't talk about it, like for a year or two, he you talked about it, you argued about it all the time, right? Kind of, like, I guess kind of, but it, we never, we kind of, like, went around the, the you know, whatever you'd call it, the perimeter. We, we didn't get to the core of the, of the, of the issue. We, we never, for like a year or two, we kind of, we'd talk about it, but we wouldn't talk about it. We would never, like, I would never say the word gay. Um, it wasn't that he made me feel uncomfortable. I mean, I guess he did make me feel uncomfortable. It wasn't that he made me feel unaccepted. It was just that... I could tell that it was taking him, you know, it was, it was something that he was trying to grapple with. And I wanted to allow him to go through that process without, you know, uh, feeling, you know, forced or... I wanted, him to, I wanted him to go through his natural evolution. And in fact, you know, it took about two years. And the moment, the thing, the, the catalyst that sort of finally, you know, brought us together and made it okay was the movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And uh, yeah, we watched it, and like we were, by the end of it, we were both crying. And uh, you know, and I think that moment when he watched that movie, you know, may, many of you may know the movie, but the the story of the movie is it's about an interracial couple who goes back to the you know to their daughter to the lady's woman's white family, and uh, they have to come to terms with the fact that she met a black man, and you know, this was back in the 1960s. So there were a lot of parallels, and. Uh, I think he just realized at that moment, like, you know, wow, you know, I, I, what have I, you know, I, I haven't been thinking about this in the right way for the last couple of years. And so there, I think in that moment there was a real shift and a, a realization, you know, in, in, on his part. We can't imagine it being any other way than, than the way it is. It's a long time ago now. I came out when I was 14, which was 2006, so, you know. Seven years. Yeah, really eight. Just the way that it's been for, you know, after, after a while, it just becomes, the, you know, as you said, the way it is. Well, I always thought that, okay, what's it going to be? The first boyfriend, the first this, the first that. And uh, 
it wasn't that big of a deal. It was, it just, it just wasn't that big of a deal. And um, anyway, I can't imagine it any other way. And and I'm as corny as it sounds. I'm really happy you are the way you are. And I can't imagine it any other way. And I really am grateful to, to be for for being there for you. And. Um, just, just an amazing organization. You know, I have very few resources at my disposal to, to feel connected and to feel like I wasn't alone. So, you know, at the age of 14, I had to turn to PFLAG. I had to turn to the Tremor Project. I had to watch, you know, uh, you know a lot of the YouTube videos, you know, self you know, help coming out videos and watch, you know, gay-themed movies. You know, that was my way of connecting to the community. So I identify with a lot of the same experiences that you know, gay teens here in Bakersfield and, you know, unfortunately, in so many other places, you know, go through. It's, it's, you know, it's a terrible thing. But, so yeah, I mean, if it, if it hadn't been for PFLAG, if it hadn't been for the Trevor Project and for HRC, and you know, that's why it's so important that, you know, those organizations exist, because uh, I would have, had it not been for them, I would have had zero uh, ability to understand you know, what I was going through and to have help through that process. I think, 